Kicking it over him. So it is. It is. And he's locked in. What a goal! Here we go. Welcome back. Australian Qualification Tournament for the 2020 Olympic Games Stage 2. Big thanks to our sponsors, Uncle Pop, The Sun Immigration, DHS, Nataku, ACTT, LA, and Global Credit Fund. I'm joined by John Murphy. Welcome, John. Thank you, Simon. Big match ahead of us, David Powell versus Nicholas Lum. Let's just quickly, before they get started, give some background information. This is a vital match in the group stage. David Powell yet to lose a match. He's on zero losses. Nick Lum, only one defeat so far uh, against Heming Hu. Um, and just quickly to get around the grounds before we get John's thoughts, uh, Heming Hu is uh, against Dominic Wang. Finn Liu against Kane Townsend. Uh, Chris Yan still in the hunt, playing on the back tables. He's near, closer to the middle table now. He's actually gone into the inner tables, table two. Chris Yan fighting his way back. He's playing Dylan Chambers. And we've got Xavier Dixon uh, playing against uh, Benjamin Gould, who is also one of the guys in contention still. So predictions, and then I'll summarise the contenders after that, John. Yeah, absolutely. Some huge matches. Uh, crucial one for Hugh Hemming against Dominic Wang. He'll want to get back onto winning ways after losing to Xavier in the last round. Finn Liu against Kane Townsend. <coughs> Probably playing both, both boys playing for pride at the moment. That's just improved. Brilliant play from the little guy, Nick Lum, John. He was dancing around the court playing both wings, but David Powell was very strong there. Yeah, I think Dave's shown throughout, throughout the last two days. He's just not missing. He's probably the strongest player in the rally, and that was demonstrated there. So right now we've got David Powell undefeated in the box seat. Nick Lum, one loss. Heming Hu, one loss. Xavier Dixon, one loss. Christian, two losses. They're the main contenders for the two spots. Anything can still happen between those four players, John? Four, yep, we're down to four. Superb Five. Fl flick. Chiquita backhand from from Nicholas Lund there coming across on his forehand side. I don't believe Dave Powell likes this matchup. However, in saying that, the two the, the previous winner of the two qualification events for the last two Commonwealth Games and Olympics has been won by Dave. And what we've seen so far proves why he's good at this event. So whatever we saw in the past with the matchup may not be relevant, John. Absolutely, I think if you if you talk about the last 12 months, no one has trained harder in mm. the practice hall than David Powell. He's prepared well for this event. He he came here knowing that he has the chance to qualify, and he knows he has form in such events. And yeah, absolutely, I have to say, Dave, favour for me in this match. Now Dominic Wang's raced out to a 10-5 against Heming Hu on court five. Good change up of serve by Dave. I think Christian's already raced out to a 1 0 win over there against uh, Dylan Chambers. Dom Dominic's cleaned up business against Hemming. I think Dave has, has served extremely clever there. Mm -hmm. You know, he, 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 he's, he's, he knows well that Nick's, Nick's backhand Chiquita is very good. And he just he's just let that serve drift longer and Nick had to change position and tried to play half long and, and made an error there. So good homework from Dave Powell there. Nice ball, Nicholas Lum. Anticipated it very well. I feel you you, you picked up you picked up on something last night, uh, Simon with Nicholas against Hemming. His, mm. his backhand has hugely improved, mm. however, sometimes he's looking to play it too much for my liking. So I think uh, during the day, sort of we've, we've debated that and discussed it. Um, it's been great development for him. Like that's that, unbelievable. That's but that puts so much more pressure on the next point too, John. Yeah, and and I think yeah, he he, he if he if he if he's to if he's to 
compete and, and, and win this match against Dave. I think I think he has to look for that forehand a little bit more and play backhand when he needs it. The, that's the that's the two hats we're, where we're sort of sitting on here, John. Just to describe it, we're sitting on two hats. One, great development, great improvement on the back end side by playing these matches a bit more with the back end, correct? Absolutely. On the second hand, if you want to win these matches, and it just comes down to winning and not improving, in a way, yeah, because you're still going to improve on the other side, but. By playing those pivot forehands, by looking for them, you're putting more pressure on the, the service return of the players, and that's the comment I'm making as a forehand player. It's sort of sending an email to your opponent saying, if you push this badly, you're going to lose. That's the pivot. The pivot is the early pivot, or looking for the pivot, is the email being sent out. And then the execution is the send button. 5-7 here with Nicholas to serve. Advantage still, Dave, in this first set. I've got to say, every time the men's single start, you just look on the all five tables and there's weird results going everywhere. Superb backhand over the table That's from Dave. That's going to be a strength for Dave, right? Yeah. That backhand cross court out wide to the forehand. Absolutely. He, it's going to be an, uh, an important part of this match. Yeah, he's tempting Nicholas to go for that counter loop and Nicholas was going backwards there. You know, in contrary to the pivot for David, it's the backhand cross court. You know, like that's the message saying, don't pivot. I just think Dave, he's looked, he's looked super sharp over the table. Mm. Probably better than I've ever seen him. And in control, right? Yeah, he, he, he's, he's, on, he's, he's all over any, any half-long or drifting long series. He's just putting his opponent under serious pressure at nine, all times. 9-5 power. Make sure that 9-6, I'll just quickly go around the table. Dominic Quang, 3-2, one love against Henning Hu. Finn Lu, one love against Kane Townsend. Christian, 8-5, 1-0. Chambers. Xavier Dixon, 9-8 against Benjamin Gould in the first set. It's been a very important match. Good spin. Good play from Nicholas Lum. Just a good block to position Prob and then the kill. Probably the most improved part of his game is that passive backhand. You know, he's able to play that cross court and down the line. Mm. And that, that was a great example of that improvement. Well balanced in the shoulders, John just sitting there waiting for both sides and then the brilliant execution and backup which was even more important the follow-up super from Dave Powell yet again to my mind that was a short serve but not to Dave he was he was over the was table there down. Nick 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 probably needs to start looking at changing his position of service not not going too much in that forehand area if he can keep his serve short Oh, I've misread. Good serve from Lum. Two serves to come from Powell, though. I mean, the, the experience of Powell, just you, you realise you didn't watch it carefully enough there. And then you start just working on it. You just start saying, hey, I've got to see that serve better. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to get away with too many of those against Dave, I don't think. No, absolutely. It's the first mistake he's made on the serve. Mm. And it just, it just serves as a reminder of what you're meant to do. Brilliant play from Nicholas Lum. Four backhands in a row. Punch, scramble, block, scramble, punch, winner. I think uh, at the moment the crowd taken to Nicholas Lum. I think he's the crowd favourite at the moment. Well, he's the new Croydon boy. Tempting serve, but loaded with backspin. Nicholas unable to, to get it up over the net. I think that just One. shows the experience of Dave. 1 0.
So Dave Powell picks up where he left off, John. Another win in the column. Uh, going around the table, some important matches. Uh, Benjamin Gould's won the first set against Xavier Dixon, while Benjamin Gould, basically his event's over. He can't qualify for the Olympics. Uh, Xavier Dixon can and has won that first set, Benjamin Gould. Uh, Chris Yan still battling it out, now up 2-0 against Chambers. And Heming, who looks like squaring it up against Dominic Wang, but still in the fight of 9-7 up to go one all. I, ju I, just, Another good spin up. I just feel with Dave, the experience is, in this kind of match, I think he'll always be just that one or two points ahead of Nick. You know, he'll get that start, and then, you know, it's very and difficult. Feed off to it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Manage it. I, I, I expect to be a close, cl every set to be close, but I just expect Dave to have that little edge. Good play by Nick there. A lot of power for a young boy, Simon. Yeah, explosive power. Big shout out to Glenn Tepper, CEO, former CEO of ITTF. Now involved in the Asian table tennis community. Big supporter of table tennis. Massive supporter of table tennis in general. Once one of the national coaches of Australian table tennis, my, my former coach as a little tacker when I was Nick's age. <laughs> Welcome, Glenn. Love to hear your thoughts, Glenn, on, on the match. David Powell looking a bit distracted there. A bit unhappy with his choice of placement. 2-2. Uh, Heming, who's squared that one up, by the way, so it's one all. Good change up of serves by Pally. He's moving it around a lot. He's changing the topspin from the backspin. He's having good spread on the table. It's, it's our first real look at Dave. Another good spread. Both balls to the middle, not just going to the backhand straight. He's spreading that ball very well. Absolutely, I think. Uh, I think Dave, Dave is just that little bit the one to be the first to make the decision. You know, he he he's putting Nicholas under that mm. pressure. Placement pressure. It's unbelievable! Oh, nice by ball Dave. from Dave Powell. Good grinding shot, white boy. Uh, Angel, bad move for Powell to go hard to the middle of Nick backhand. Absolutely, not to the backhand. We don't want to be going there. We're going to go wide backhand. We're going to go middle backhand, as in elbow backhand. Couldn't agree more. And, uh, and changing up that pace, knowing what you're going to get. I mean, a bit of a slower one wide, make him stretch out. He's got to, he's got to place the ball well against Lum. And that's, that's the experience of Dave, that he can do it. Yeah, that placement of serve from Nick there, I was about to say, everything was just going to that right. too much middle forehand. Yep. He, he, he also has good variation to go middle and also straight with his, with his short serve. And I think that's going to be crucial to Nick's service combination. Good change up the pace too, a bit higher. Change the biomechanics of Dave's forehand. Again, Simon, we said it when, when Xavier Dixon played uh, Heming Hugh. I think if Nick can get a foothold in the match, it can be a different match. Otherwise, I think Dave will run out an easy winner. Mm. So William's calling for about a 10 to 15 centimetre movement of balls, of, sh of shots. Yep, same thing I'm saying, William, absolutely. And that can be shorter, that can be longer. back in. Calm, just receives it back. It keeps the pressure on him. You know, we, we, we spoke a lot about body language. And I think with Nick, it's going to be very important when the, when the pressure moments come, when he's not on top in games, what he can, what he can show. And to my mind, that's going to be a big challenge for him here in this game. Nice short forehand. Didn't go through the ball a bit. But it was decisive. He knew what he wanted to do. 
I'm feeling the eye contact from Dave on our commentary box here, uh, John. Uh, absolutely, he's, he's I think he's one of our players that always wants to know what's going on. Yeah, I have to say, both both uh, myself and yourself <laughs> would have a very good working relationship with Dave in the hall, and it's a pleasure to see him play so well. So yeah, absolutely, yeah. He's uh, one of the uh, almost very important cogs of the of the training squad, isn't he, in the, in the national team when we're away. Good he's passive active from Nicholas here, there. I feel like he lost a bit of focus there. He's just hitting the ball hard just around the grounds. Dixon's squared up, one all against Gould. Town, Townsend squares up against Finn Lu. One all. Smart Super. play, that's better. That's more focused play from David Powell. Something something that a lot of people would say Dave is not very good at is, is, is straight balls, and there he played an excellent straight for him. change up there's that wider ball just went a little bit wider to the back end and also I think Nick was a bit slow to um, make his ready position of interesting comments on the social media page so just make sure you're tapping into that reading them there's some great insights like Glenn Tepper's talking about the building of the sport in Australia thanks Glenn that's positive information from our end and then Rahul Matthew has uh, commented Nick has to be more vocal and put pressure on Dave that is something that uh, uh, John has been sort of uh, asking for we, we normally go for a break but John are you happy to just sort of discuss a bit of that yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I think it's a, it's a it's on the younger players. Sorry, Go it's on. a very important uh, point that Rahul has, has brought up, and something we, we we speak on a daily basis with Nick about to defend him a little bit in this situation. He's a 14-year-old boy who now finds himself in with a chance of qualifying for the Olympics. Not an easy not an easy pressure. I think he's handled himself very well on on when he hasn't played on the TV tables, and also against uh, Hemi on the TV table yesterday. Um, but agree. I mean, if he if he if if he was listening into the commentary here, he would know my my talk would be to tell him he's got to be positive. And yeah, absolutely, Rahul. But these are these are young kids, and and uh, they're, they're not they're not they're not at the pinnacle of their career yet. But yeah, I agree I mean, completely. Yeah, this is this is all just about development at the end of the day. Um, it wasn't bent earmarked as a qualification event. I mean, it almost scares me a little. I don't know about you, John, but it scares me a little bit that the position that Nick finds himself in, um, whilst it's it's fantastic and it's awesome, it just still scares me. Um, you know, because he is in the development phase of his career. Uh, where we're thinking under 18 World Championships, we're thinking under 14 Cadet World Championships this year for Nick. We're thinking long term, 10 years from now, developing that player. So sorry, go on. Absolutely, like to my mind, Nick is one of the best Cadet players in, uh, in the world right now. You know, he's amongst the top 15 to 20 players in the world, and he needs to be let be a Cadet player. Yes. And just because he's good enough within <laughs> his own country to compete, I also believe you know the best German kids at his age, the best French kids. Mm. The best they're Chinese not playing kids. In this, mate. They're not. The, the Olympics is not on their on yeah. their radar. Yeah. It's 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 further down the path. Not good. And we need to allow them to to, to develop. It's great that they're in with a chance, but let's see them develop over the next 10 to 15 years. Yeah, for me, you've hit the nail. Can I just say one more thing on that, John? You've hit the nail on the head. And and I, I was sort of part of this as a as a junior too. I think that it's it's so important when you said that sort of we see them as kids just because they're competing with the adults. We've got to remember that they are kids, they are juniors at the end of the day, cadet in Nick's case. So when, when we're making decisions, we can we understand that they, they're just cadets, not seniors. They're not meant to behave like David Powell. So Back to the match here yeah, again, good. Dave. Dave, to my mind, doing exactly what a, what a, what a senior pro does. He puts the pressure Three on love the junior. Two love, man. Yeah, he just... He hasn't taken the foot off, has he? No. Impressive. Uh, Dixon 8 2 1. Nice ball, Nick. Just thought it was a winner or something. I don't know. He just didn't prepare for the next one. Superb. 
we've also got we've also we've also got to think of the, the physicality for Nick. You yeah. know, he's only 14. He's had some big big, big asks this week. Come on, those tree trunk legs can handle this, John. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Dave, Dave, completely in control here. Uh, Dixon nine three against Benjamin Gould one one. Sorry, eight three. Great ball from Nick. Great there. play there, and he has to play well to win a point. And that's and that's what I that that's what I want. We, we we want to see quality against quality. We don't want to see easy points. We want to see both both sides winning points in in quality exchanges. Dominic Wang leads two one over Hemming Hu there, John. Interesting. Body language for Nick now is going to be crucial. If he can, if he can, yeah, it's another part you're working on. Come back into this game. Do you want Chambers fought back against uh, Christian over there? John, Chris is still with only two losses. If he keeps winning, keeps winning matches, he'll find himself in the places. Uh, he's back to two all against Dylan Chambers after leading 2 0, John. Yeah, absolutely. I think we, we, we referenced to it earlier on. We wanted to see something from the players who, mm. who probably felt that qualification is, is out of their reach now, and we're certainly seeing that with the likes of Benjamin Gould, Dominic Quang, and. Owning the game here, David Dylan Chow. Chambers. Sorry, John. But Dylan Chambers is showing that, isn't he? Absolutely. That's great. Good battle from Dylan. Well done, Dylan. Well done, Dylan. Well done, Dom. Well done, Benjamin Gould. Those sort of three guys. Kane Townsend still fighting away. Eight one. Just a reminder, straight after this, we'll have Melissa Tapper versus Jan Fang Lei. Jan Fang Lei losing the first match of the tournament against Stephanie Zhang but hasn't had an unblemished record since. Four zeros all the way through, John. She's back in form. She's ready to go, mate. Melissa Tapper, undefeated at this stage, but realistically, difficult match coming up, but should be a thriller. Absolutely, Simon. I think uh, the women's event is very well poised. Melissa probably finds herself in the best position, the only player undefeated. Um, so, yeah, really looking forward to that one. I have to say, Nick Brave there now with the check flip. He, something that has improved vastly in the last six months. I think, I think looking at, at a matchup like this and having two players of contrasting experience mm -hmm. with, with, with Dave being there, done it. Nicholas only coming up shows the importance of having a senior team in front of you. Yeah. You know, shows the importance for the young guys in our squad that there's a senior squad of six to eight players in front of them. You know, they're able to compete like Nick has shown this week and Finn. By the way, they're also very good role models. Absolutely. That's been one, that's another one, right? Like, looking at it from our coaching hat, yeah. we've got some great role models for these kids. Like, everyone's still fighting, everyone's just working away. It's Fantastic, yeah. you know, and I, and I think uh, we had that at the at the Oceano Olympic <laughs> team trials. You know, we had our we had our youth players yeah. in as practice partners. You know, supporting I, uh, every match, getting yeah. their drink bottles ready for them. Yeah. You know, hitting with with with, with Chris Yan before the big yeah, uh, yeah New Zealand match. getting their bottles and warming them up, right? Yeah, we've no greater role models than, than this senior team. Yeah. Fantastic. There you have it, three zero, David Powell.
shout out to our great training partner, Sanish. Sanish and Becca, legend. Playing the Indian Mate, Championships next week. he's got a big tournament week. coming up next week in India, right? Sanish, make sure you come back to Melbourne, training with our team, a champion of India. Absolutely good luck in the national championships. And, and, and if you pop in, pop, pop uh, into national coach of India, Mr. Brett Clark, you let him know Australian table tennis is alive and well. Great to see Brett doing so well in India, Simon. Yeah, shout out to Brett Clark. He's not on, but if anyone finished, say good day. Here we go. All set. Uh, just a quick round round the tables. Dominic Wang seven four two one over Hemi Hu John. Uh, three one. Sorry, two sets to one for Xavier Dixon, down 4-1 in that set, though. Good work by Nicholas Lom. He, he has to work every inch to win one point Christian in this won match. won another set there, John, so he continues his way forward, too. So he's 3-2 against Dylan now. The way the results are going, Christian is playing his way back into contention slowly but surely. So there's a serious chance to get back in now, right? Especially if, uh, the, the let's say, the, uh, the, the Hemming one goes against him, against Dominic. It opens it wide open. Yeah, probably at this stage, Dave Powell and Xavier Dixon oh, yeah. have it in their hands. Yep. The way they're going at the moment. And we know from all the matches we've been watching, anything could change. Joel Coglin's joined us, another national representative for the Para. I believe he's going to the uh, Paralympics, Joel Coglin. That's the type of ball I think Nicholas should be taking with forehand. Earlier in that rally, he, he chose backhand and probably wasn't able to put enough pressure on, on Dave. I have to say, Simon, how impressive is Dave Pell? Mate, yeah, look, he, he made, a, he made uh, massive inroads over the last 12 months. I must admit, I, whilst I saw the massive inroads in uh, Commonwealth Championships, He's just showing maturity. He's, he's showing uh, strength in mind to just keep it flowing. Like, I mean, he's the only guy putting away players 4-0. Is that a fair call? Like, no one else is getting those 4-0 wins as regularly as Dave Powell. So, very impressive. I mean, and Nick Lum is coming into this match with only one loss. Yeah, I said it earlier on. You know, the, 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 big, the big movers in this tournament were Xavier Dixon and Nick Lum. And it looks like Dave Powell could take both out for now. Mm. That's there, yeah, that's my point. Perfectly summarised, John. That's why you're the head coach. Thank you, Simon. A of confidence there for myself. Uh, Gil, uh, Dominic Wang, 11 6 over uh, Henning Hu, leads 3 1 now. Massive news. Dominic 3 1 over Henning Hu. Xavier Dixon, 5-7 down, 2-1 up against Benjamin Gould. Massive, very important match for Xavier Dixon to get through. Bullet from Nicholas Long. You said it earlier in the um, first set or second set about Dave sort of staying two or three points in front. Uh, you made a comment about that and I've just been watching it all the way through and every now and then I'll sort of forget about the score and I'll hit back to the scoreboard John and then again 5-4 after Nick hits the bullet still managing that scoreboard beautifully Dave Pell. absolutely I think I think to, to, to give to give the viewers a, a, an idea of how dedicated Dave Pell is the guy comes in a suit to practice you know he comes from work this guy is in the hall five six times a week from work and the effort that he's put in is certainly on show here at the at the Olympic trials. I love the way uh, one of his students, he's a teacher, uh, Dave, one of his students, um, uh, Raymond Zeng, Raymond Zeng, he's a student, student uh, he's got two students, I understand that, but he's one of them in particular, Raymond Zeng, will turn up to the same training session and sometimes forget to call Dave, Dave, he'll, go, he'll call him Mr. Powell or Sir. <laughs> Some good comments again from Rahul Matthew. Couldn't agree more. Nicholas is a third ball player, but again, he probably just doesn't have the power yet to 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 get through Dave. Dave, very. And that's the experience too. Like, 
that's what I, I pointed that out to you this morning, John, about you know the positional play. Super from Nicholas over the ball backhand deep in Dave's forehand. I have to say, Nicholas has shown some mental strength that I haven't seen before. Timeout called by Russell Laval on the uh, Heming Who match 0 3 now in that set for Dominic Wang. 10 8 for Benjamin Gould. Nice play. How good of an experience for, for Nicholas Lum out there on a, on a TV table at a, at a trials when he has a chance to realistically still in the tournament. What an experience. The youngest, youngest Australian athlete to make a table tennis team at the Olympic Games. We've had so many records in the past years in table tennis. Jan Feng Lei making five Olympics. Melissa Tapper, the first para and able. This would be another big story. 14-year-old making the Olympic Games. Should he be able to do it? But yes, absolutely a great experience for, for Nick. I just feel that Dave just never let Nick settle into this game. Putting him under pressure right from the off and you can see Nick missed out a few balls that well, great open there's a up. chance here for Nick to get his first set and get on the board and maybe change momentum John yeah it's it's, it's definitely like that I think we've, we've, we've seen it here Stephanie Sang 3-1 down against Tracy Feng and came back in the match to win to win 4-3 uh, so Nicholas definitely not out of it if he can if he can nip this set and he and he is serving here there are more turns in this match than the Great Ocean Road in this uh, tournament, I should say. Uh, Heming Hu is now 0-6-1-3 against Dominic Wang, and if Dominic finishes that off, this throws this tournament wide open. Do Xavier Dixon also in a battle against Benjamin Gould, another one that would throw it wide open. Would bring Christian straight back in it. Oh, big miss from the youngster. <laughs> I can see a little bit of a little bit of tiredness coming into Nicholas. A little Nicholas. bit of junior. Yeah, I think the man known the man known for watching errors of Pokemon might need a bit of Pokemon tonight to, to, to re rejig his energy. <laughs> nice from Dave. He just tempted Nicholas into that That's counter move. Smart play from Dave. In fairness. Isn't it? There it is, Dave Powell, 4-0. Super from Dave, Simon. Undefeated David Powell. What do I think? Undefeated, baby. Okay, uh, before we uh, head off, we've got a big match coming up in the women's singles. Uh, I'll give you a final recap, and then I'll get to... Sorry. We'll stay, we'll stay until the end of this set um, with Dominic Wang and Heming Hu. Um, we'll give you some live commentary on it. So... Radio style, 8-3 now, 3-1 for Dominic Wang. Dominic's on serve. Uh, got the serve here at 8-3. Got the serve here at 8-3. He's going for a serve from the middle of the table, going for a tomahawk serve. Topspin serve, Hemming, big forehand topspin, loop to loop now. Edge ball from Hemming, 8-4. 8-4. Discussion between Heming Hu and Russell Laval. Heming taking his time, walking back to Russell to have a discussion. Almost, a, almost cardable that one for me, John.
Thompson serve, push. Good block, block back end. Another net ball from Hemming. That's an edge and a net for the last two points to bring him back from 8-3. He was down 8-2. Interesting, no timeout in the in the wine corner. M maybe a yep. maybe a time to, to get a little break in there. So 8-5, Hemming serving. 5-8, 6-8, 8-6 eight, eight. Eight, now for Dominic Huang. There we see the timeout. Timeout time. from Dominic Huang. The realisation that the win is close. So we've got a timeout. And you'll have to hold on for a minute. Uh, next up will be Jan Fang Lei versus Melissa Tapper in the women's singles matches. Heming Hu's only got one defeat to his name. In another match, Xavier Dixon now leads 6-4 in the fifth set. Locked at 2 all against Benjamin Gould. And our previous match, David Powell has taken out he uh, Nicholas Lum 4-0. Hemmings coming back into the table now. Dom called the timeout. Dominic Huang. Taking his time. So unfortunately, uh, our live match is finished. So we're just giving some live commentary on this final set between Heming Hu and Dominic Huang. If Hu loses the match, it will open up the door for other players. Absolutely. It just opens up the draw really wide it means really all five players who was in contention going through going except to that for Dave Powell but I mean he, Nick even having lost yes, Davis still, doesn't in, matter, he's right? he's still in the hunt but David Powell just jumps another street ahead right I mean he's, he, he's then zero losses absolutely now with everyone else around him potentially play. two losses to their name Can, a counter loop from Dominic Wang back to play so Dominic serves a reverse to the forehand, tempts Hemming to make the open up, and Dominic counter loops the ball straight cross court to win the point to go 9 6. So 9 6, 3 1 for Dominic Wang. Dixon now 6 6, 2 2, 6 7, thank you. Good flick by Hemming. Block off the end of the table by Dominic 7 9. I really like the way Hemming's got himself back into this match. He was down and out, Simon. 8 3 at yeah. one stage. He's done it again. He Continues to do it. Dixon goes 7-7, seven, 2-2. Seven, two, two. Hemming. Hemming misses the block off the end. 10-7 for Dominic Wang. Three match balls. Hemming serving three match balls for Dominic Wang to win the match and give Hemming here his second loss. And put Dave Hill firmly in the box seat to qualify for the 2020 Sydney Olympics amazing big counter lift from Dominic Wang wins the match 11-7-3-1-4-1 Dominic Wang hands the upset of the tournament in the men's draw we'll be back soon with women's singles action Anderson, get over Anderson, it is, it is. And he's locked in, but what a goal! 